Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be some underrated makeup products. Now all these products are cruelty free as is everything on this channel and today we're going to talk about some things that I don't think get enough love. Now these may be products that I've talked about before but I don't see anybody else talking about so without any further ado, let's jump into the video. Before we get started, I have a special shout out to Katie. Thank you so much for watching my videos. It's really cool to be a mutual friend and uh, hope to meet you sometime. That'd be really awesome. So let's jump into the video now. The first thing I want to mention is something I've been raving about a lot lately, but no one else seems to care or it's just been out for a while and no one else talks about it anymore. This is the Cover FX Perfecting Setting Powder. I love this so much. I used this yesterday in my little makeup tutorial and I absolutely love it. It is a little bit dark, has a little bit of color to it, even though my color is translucent light. It only comes in two shades, but still, it's absolutely beautifully finely milled powder. I don't have too much like flying in the air when I use it. It goes a long way, and it's one of those things that I finally bit the bullet on. Like I bought the little tiny travel size one from Sephora at checkout, and then I ran out and I had to buy the full size like immediately the next day I ran out. So great powder. I love it. And I still have a ton left and I've been using it a lot. Now this is a product that got a lot of heat and a lot of controversy. So a lot of people said they weren't going to review it. But as someone who has tried it myself, I completely understand the stance against the shade range because honestly, especially with that filter on it, they looked really strangely colored. But the product itself is absolutely amazing. I really hope they expand the shade range in the future. This is the Bounce Foundation by Beauty Blender. Ooh. I have this weird feeling, I'm like, oh, people hate when I talk about this product because the shade range is crap, and I completely agree with that fact, but the product itself is fantastic, like, this is a really good foundation, like, there needs to be a petition to make better shade ranges for this because it is worth picking up if it comes in your color. It's so good. This is the shade 1.20, it's a little yellow on me, but it's such a good, beautiful finish, and it lasts for a really long amount of time. I love the unique applicator of it. Everything about this is absolutely fantastic, and I love this and thoroughly enjoy wearing it. Next up is a primer I've raved about, but no one else talks about ever. Like, ever. This is the Rose Quartz Primer by ColourPop. I love this thing. I have a backup sitting on hand all the time. This is like my third one of these. I go through it pretty decently fast. It's five bucks, and it is absolutely an amazing smell. I'm not a fan of the Amethyst Purple one. It's just not my fragrance, but... It just feels so light on the skin. I like to do this at the end of the day after I'm moving my makeup anyways, just because I like the feel of the moisture on my skin. And it's just a really great primer. I'll mix in this in with the Tarte Marine Boosting Mist sometimes, and I'll get a really good mist going on my face for a primer. It feels great. I feel like it does a really good job as a primer. And as someone who has dry skin, I'm really a fan of these mists, because I feel like they do a decently good job of priming my skin without drying it out with like a silicone-based primer or anything weird like that. Next up is a brand overall, I talk about it a ton, and I don't see anybody else talking about it, and the reason I decided to throw these in this video is because I got the email today for the Boxy Lux, like I've made it off the waiting list, they accepted me in the Boxy Lux, um, for Boxy Charm for December, and you get the email saying, do you want this item or this item, and one of the items was a Suva Beauty palette, and of course I picked the Suva Beauty palette because I love their products, they're actually the first company to ever put me on their PR list, so I really appreciate that and I want to support them any way I can. Besides, their products are absolutely fantastic quality. Like, I've never heard someone say, I don't like this Suva Beauty product. It's not a thing. <laughs> also, if you are wondering what the other item is, you can get the Suva Beauty palette I've never seen before. Or you could get this, like, flat iron hair thing, which I think is kind of cool that it's not just a makeup item. So, if you got the email for that, that's what the other item is. But Suva Beauty in general, their shadows are fantastic. Their metallics are so beautiful. Their brights are so good. Their mattes are so like soft without being super powdery. This is the Block Party palette. I did a look using this palette and I've also like used it in like a makeup tutorial I believe. And then I have the Saffron palette which is their new one which I do believe in the campaign is support people with immigrant parents and stuff so that's really cool. And this is the Saffron palette. This one's actually a beautiful color scheme and I love the quality. Like let's swatch the gold and the red right here. Let's swatch a matte too. Matte doesn't look like it's swatched out like that. But these are so good and they're so creamy. I love the pigmentation without a bunch of fallout and the shimmers last for a really long time. And if you have a hooded lid, these have a little bit of a like stick to them. So the shimmers don't raise above your crease like immediately. They have like a little bit of hold to them. So they're really good shadows. 
Also, they're hydro liners. I use these every day. I don't use like the fun colors just as much, but my brows are done with Suva Beauty's Grease Hydro Liner. Like I just put a little small layer of the Hydro Liner through my brows as my brow product. I've been doing it for months. Nothing else on my brows. And they're really good. Like I can deepen up, I can really wet the Hydro Liner to get them darker if I want to. But a lot of times I'll just leave them as like kind of moist and it gives me like this nice brown effect instead of just like a straight up black. So it's really easy to work with. You can kind of get a different shade out of it other than the one shade you kind of see in the pan. And I really enjoy the products. Next up is a brand I've only seen on Instagram and this is Glitter Injections. Now you might remember this little product right here from my little festival makeup I did on Instagram. This is so fun. Like I'm not a fan of glitter and I'm not a fan of big chunky glitter because I feel like it's a pain to work with and a pain to remove. But this stuff right here, this is the shade you teal me is so good like it's a chunky let me give you a close view of it come on focus it's chunky it's glittery but it doesn't make a mess like it's wet and it has its own stick to it so it sticks on its own it's a very beautiful consistency without being like a mess or just like a big fat glitter like it holds on its own it has like the stuff inside that's like its own self adherence glue or something because I just rubbed it on my shoulders with nothing else down and it looked to me just fine. So I absolutely love this product and I also have a bunch of loose glitters and stuff but since I'm not the biggest fan of glitter this is like the only product I've tried for them other than their highlighter that I really like. Next up we're going to do an eyeshadow palette and this was very hyped when it first initially released as a limited edition item and it came back and I haven't heard anybody talking about it even though this palette was selling for $135 used on like eBay and stuff after it was limited edition and I've seen people in declutter videos declutter this item and it makes me want to scream because it is absolutely gorgeous and I love it and this is the colored rain queen of hearts palette anything colored rain in general their single shadows are fantastic their cheers to the beauty palette is amazing this is the palette in particular that gets my heart racing I mean honestly I'm not a fan of like Eh, boring color schemes, but this quality, this color scheme, this layout, this packaging. Let's just show you. This is the Queen of Hearts palette. I wish it wasn't so reflective so you could see how pretty it is. Look at it. It's so pretty. I love the mattes in this palette. Like most of the time it's like the shimmers are so metallic and that's the pretty part of the palette. These are very metallic pretty shimmers, but these mattes are so smooth they blend themselves out they're not the softest shadows in the world but I love them very much and I have very minimal fallout with this it just it, it's a dream to work with and the shadows are great so anything colored rain if you could even just try a single I would definitely suggest it because they're very good like the amount of hype that Juvia's Place gets for having amazing quality shadows I do believe colored rain deserves just as much recognition for it they are pricier but they have sales all the time so you can get like $25 off a palette and it brings the price down, but it's really good. All right, so next up we have a little mini quad palette from Blush Tribe. I still don't know if this was from the brand or from one of you guys because it just showed up on my PO box one day and I love it very much. It is it's just a tiny quad palette. I don't know if this is still sold out. It's just, it just says just blend it and it it's just like this. It's really cute. The reason I like this is I like its cute compact size and these shadows are so pigmented. And this is the absolute beautiful little quad, perfect for a sunset. I've used this so many times. I love it very much. The only thing is like when the pigment, you get like a little bit of fallout on the edge of this white, like it doesn't want to wipe away. It just wants to stay a little bit dirty looking. It's just a really weird plastic. But the quality of the shadows is fantastic. I'm thinking about depotting it, but I just really like the little tiny packaging. So it's super cute and the pigmentation is out of this world. I want to try more Blush Tribe stuff just because this blew me away. Another brand that I seem to be the only one talking about is Lorac. Why does no one talk about Lorac anymore? Like, why does this happen? Like, I know back in the original YouTube beauty days, people were raving about, like, the regular Mega Pro Pro palettes and stuff, but no one talks about it anymore. And Lorac has amazing quality stuff. Like, I have not tried their lipsticks yet, but their contour palettes, like, this is the Pro Contour. Um, I used it today for my contour. I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I have two of the Pirates of the Caribbean chic palettes. And if I see another one for a deal, I'll have a third one. I've already hit pan on the contour color in there. The shadows 
and the eyeshadow palettes are so good that the Rock Pro 3 is my favorite one. The Rock Mega Pros, not as much because I don't use a lot of the same shades over and over again, but their Pro palettes, so good. The quality is so soft, but not too delicate. There's a little bit of kickback in the pan, but not very much. They blend out like a dream. They're like a butter in palette form, and I love them very much. These contour colors are not as buttery. They're more of a dry powder, but they're so pigmented and they blend like a dream. And the blushes, the highlights, like everything about Lorac powders in general, I'm in love with. And um, I don't know, every time I release something, even if it's boring colors, I'm like, mm, I just want to feel that shadow though. So <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I really like them. Next up we have an eyeliner and I've really been enjoying this one lately just because I see a lot of NYX products maybe mentioned, like the new foundation, but I don't see like a lot of hype around any of these products. And this is the Faux White, White Smoke Eyeliner. This came out a while back and I kind of loved it like the first week or two I had it and then forgot about it. But I used it again lately because I feel like the ColourPop gel liners I usually use have not been sticking my waterline as much. My eyes have just been kind of sensitive with all this weather chains and stuff. But these are the, still the things that stick in my waterline really well. They come in four different like pastel colors. I'm using white smoke today and it just looks white. It's very nice and beautiful. And if you like really pack it on, you can get the lavender out of it. But it sticks in my waterline and it's fantastic. And it's cheap. You can get it at, like CVS or Target or anything. Alright, so we only have two products left, and the first one I'm talk about is the lipstick I'm wearing today, and this is the Il Maquillage Matte Royal Lipstick. The Il Maquillage lipsticks in general, like we did that video where I tested $300 worth of Il Maquillage makeup, and I wasn't sure about it at first, but then it really grew on me. This lipstick I wear constantly. Now, you might not know, I have adult makeup on today because I have some adult stuff to do in about an hour, so I wore an adult-looking lipstick, so I look like... I can be taken a little bit more seriously than like a bright neon face, but this is such a good lipstick. Anytime I have like something to do that's not just like going shopping or getting groceries or something, I'll wear this lipstick. It makes me feel like such an adult. I don't know. It's absolutely a beautiful color. I love it. I don't have to take it with me when I go somewhere. It glides on so smooth. It doesn't dry out the lips, but it is very matte. Mm -hmm. This color, I love the formula fantastically and beautifully well done. I love it very much. I feel like I'm ranting. I just really like this lipstick. The packaging is everything. They're a little bit pricey, but I really love it. And lastly is a lipstick that I have not tried and I see in Target, but I don't hear anybody talking about it unless it's in like a drugstore haul video. So I don't see anybody's monthly favorites or anything like that. This is the Pixie by Petra liquid lipsticks. These are so good. I didn't know I haven't used them myself until just recently, and I have the entire collection. So this is the Pixie by Peony. It's my favorite color. Peony Pink. It's Pixie by Petra. Peony Pink is the color. It's just a beautiful, kind of mauve purpley pink. You know, like a muted pink color that we love on this channel. And I just love it. There's also, like, Really Rose, which I've been wearing a lot. Those are my two favorites out of the entire Pixie by Petra collection. And these are so good. Like the quality, it makes my lips feel like I'm gliding on a very soft lip cream and they don't dry out my lips. They dry down very matte. They're not the most wearing, like they don't last the longest, but they're very good lipsticks and this color just gets to me. So I absolutely love it and the packaging is very cute and nice as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'd love to hear something that's cruelty free, that's underrated, that you like a lot in the comment section down below. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.